Welcome to Cartoonist Kayfabe. My name's Ed Piscor. I'm Jim Rugg. We're going to talk about Dingbats of Danger Street, man. One of the Kirby masterpieces, Jimmy. What do you got for us up front, though? I have Street Angel, Deadly Squirrel Alive. This is the Image Comics collection. Completely different than the hardcover book. I get that question sometimes. Uh, this is all the Street Angel stuff from 2017 on. It's all the, uh, the color books that Image printed. So several stories here, including a few that weren't published anywhere and uh, available wherever comics are sold. It's a ninja on a skateboard, so superhero action for any age reader. Patreon.com slash Ed Piscor is where I'm serializing my Red Room comic strip, man. Uh, I think I'm, this might be a cover image or something at some point. Three bucks to get you the complete archive. Murder on the dark web for fun and profit, Jimmy. That's a great looking piece. <laughs> Boom. Let's talk about Dingbats of Danger Street, man. One of the great... Uh, Kirby first issue specials. First off, nobody could do a first issue like Jack Kirby. Man, He gets it all in there. Well, some context. DC ran a series called First Issue Special, and uh, Kirby did a couple of them. Yes. He should have done all of them. That would have <laughs> been the, the most awesome series ever to just have Kirby doing Listen, like you know concepts. Simonson ain't no slouch. No, that's a Ditko, Ditko Creeper story. Ditko ain't no slouch. These are, these are a really fun series. I think DC has collected these recently, but exactly what you said, Ed. It's, it's, it's like a first issue, you know, like introduce these characters, and I don't know if any of them actually spun off into their own series, but that's sort of uh, kind of the gimmick, the concept. These were really cheap. When I started really getting into Kirby, this was one I could actually find. Yeah, down at Ides, man, on, under their stairs, 70 cents, I picked this baby up. I love this. This was one of my favorite Kirbys that I came across early in my Kirby reading. Uh, it's my favorite of his first issue specials. It's really awesome. And some context for it is this is a kid gang. Yeah. The, the Dingbats are, are a gang of, uh, I don't know, young teenagers or something in this city. Another first issue special is Green Team, which is another kid gang issue by Joe Simon, who was, you know, Kirby's longtime partner, co-creator of Captain America, probably their biggest credit together, but kind of cool, a bunch of rich young kids. So yeah. this would have been a great crossover to have these two gangs squaring off against each other. I also brought, this is a DC reprint of Boy Commandos, which Simon and Kirby. Keep this one out. Uh, in your archives because we got to do an episode on it. I love this comic. Absolutely. I love but this But the issue. boy gang, the kid gang, was a subgenre that they did. Uh, another one was Boys Ranch, which was reprinted in a, I think Marvel reprinted it, like Fighting American in a nice hardcover in the early 90s. Very readable, very enjoyable, and it's almost like romance comics or something. Like, this was a popular genre for a decade or, or some time. I don't know if Kirby and Simon invented this or not, but they did several of them. There was the Guardian with Very the well Newsboy received. Legion. Yes, like that was a super Legion. early one. And obviously it's a no-brainer. It's a bunch of young people. You're selling these comics to young readers, a lot of these comics. So, of course, put put characters in there that the young reader's going to identify with. This is young adult 50 years before young adult. <laughs> but all, all kind of at the same time as Dingbats would have been these two releases to give some context of, can we bring back the Kid Gang comic? I guess the answer is no, but I, <laughs> I, I dig this story. Uh, 1975, I believe, is your publication release date, right at the end, basically, of Kirby's time at DC. And uh, I think a lot of inspiration comes from just sort of his childhood. These are like young, young toughs. Uh, we've seen him explore some of those ideas with the Yancey Streeters in in the Marvel comics in, in Fantastic Four. And uh, this this is a good comic. This is a fun comic, but, uh, you know, maybe could have ta taken a second pass on some of the names, a second try on some of the names. This is really funny. I'm glad you say that because this is Kirby getting to be up in age. You know, this is near the end of his career. I'm not sure how old he would have been here, but, but certainly in his 50s, maybe 60s, and uh, writing, like, kid youth culture <laughs> it's really peculiar the language throughout this like trying to use like hip lingo and slang and stuff and i think just probably making most of it up yeah uh, but very fun to read because it is strange you know and the characters names good looks non-fat crunch and bananas the lead is not buried with any of those man <laughs> the kid with skinny power guess his name <laughs> and off the bat so like it starts off at the top, man. The parents don't want them. The friends don't want them. Society doesn't want them. What comic reader in 1975 couldn't relate to that, man? Yeah, we all wanted them. <laughs> I love the setting of Danger Street. <laughs> it's it's all there. It's so close to like a cartoon pitch. It's a cartoon pitch. Yeah, like this would be like a perfect like Ruby Spears, you know, thing to show at the boardroom. And it's a it's a good episode 
of a good cartoon. That's that's this issue. So Mike Royer, who did a lot of Kirby's inking while he was at DC and in the 70s, uh, he is the guy doing the inks here. And I assume the lettering as well. It, it doesn't say that, but I think that's his letter. I mean, it's pretty clearly his lettering style. Yeah. Uh, interesting note, the Creeper issue is also inked by Mike Royer. So you get a chance to see Steve Ditko, uh, you know, the, the cool. other co-architect of the Marvel Universe, inked by Mike Royer. So pretty interesting uh you know, another piece from this first issue series. But here we go, man, right into the action, right? Yeah, it goes like from, it's like the cover is panel one, you know? Yeah, I dig that cover too. You know, their backs against that fence. It feels like of a time period. For sure. And you got the kid with his little stretchy uh, (laughs) exercise gimmick, right? He would be crunch. (laughs) Yes. And, I mean, this is a complicated illustration to pull off. You got this, like, dastardly supervillain bust through that wooden fence... He jams up little uh, not non-fat and gets caught up in the little jazzercizer, man. <laughs> and pursued by a cop who is shooting at him and inadvertently at the kids. Kirby is a master. <laughs> what a page. Kirby is a freaking master. Uh, non-fat is my favorite character, and we're going to see him do a lot of acting. Uh, there, there's, there's a lot of stuff happening non-verbally uh, as, as we go. Uh, there's... The, the cop is pursuing this red guy, you know, this uh, Bat Rock the Leaper guy, uh, looking for a little film canister. And it turns out that it was a non-fats hot dog. He's choking on it. And then our muscular guy, Crunch, <laughs> he's, he's going to give him his version of the Heimlich, and it's going to send little non-fat flying. Yeah, I love that. that. That's a fun Kirby-esque moment of uh, character, you know. The, the super strong guy hits him so hard he goes flying. That's great, because you really wouldn't need to have that. All you need to do is have him knock that film canister out of his mouth. The other stuff is Kirby imagination. Yeah, and the storytelling's all there, man. Mm-hmm. Like, like Crunch is about to pick up that little film film canister. Uh, they, they are examining it. And, like, <laughs> look at little non-fat man. He's, 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 it's right after he does that fuck you arm gesture thing. <laughs> And he kicks, he kicks Crunch. That's going to be like a repeating motif. Yes. The body language of these, of, of this character is incredible. It's like Bigfoot cartooning. Totally. It's that's Jack Davis shoes, man. Yeah. <laughs> Bouncing, taking bumps. Yeah. <laughs> man, I fell off of monkey bars on my ass once and knocked the wind out of me. That's the first time that ever happened to me. And I thought I was going to die. That's a scary feeling the first time you get the wind knocked out of you. Yeah, yeah. You also, falling on your case. ass isn't any fun. I did that on roller skates on concrete. I think I broke my tailbone. This is a great design. Very cool. Awesome colors, man. It's all the cool colors on that page. Nice lettering, too, in the Gasser title. We see, I, I like Mike Royer lettering. That's a style that I don't see very often, you know, emulating that gas kind of line for it. Very fun. Good colors, too. And we have our, uh, you know, the Jim Brooks joke. Why do it once if you could do it 50 times, man? <laughs> we got non-fat kicking that guy. And, like, nobody ever notices no fat, non-fat kicks. Yeah, nobody sells them. <laughs> it's very rare to get Kirby comedy, you know? Like, I think that was the rap with Fighting American. It was a little bit of a parody of his, yeah, of his uh, Captain America days. Uh, this is the only other thing that really comes to mind. Yeah, that, that it makes me wonder if there are other ones. I want to point out uh, Crunch throwing a really good punch. I think that's a great panel for, for a Kirby action shot. Really strong. When Mike Royer gets on board, it's around the time where it's like every Jack Kirby panel is like a perfectly composed image. Yes. And then the pages are perfectly balanced with blacks and whites. This is such a ludicrous story. It is. I wish it? there were a million of these. I know. Like, it's all about the film canister... It's very important. It has some sort of, uh, I forget what it is, some sort of plans on it or whatever. Um, a lot of the storytelling is 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 verbal in this. Mm-hmm. So things are explained that um, are actually very visual things. I think it's a page count issue or something. Uh, but you would think that Kirby would draw some of the stuff that is mentioned in dialogue balloons. But you, that you just this is a speedy comic. Like, a lot of characters, too. Like for, a, for a, an intro issue, you know, you're covering the four kids in the gang but there are also two super villains in costumes running around separately and then there's cop action going yeah on. yeah you have to have your like responsible cop that's a part of the kid gang thing you do need an adult you need like your a captain liaison. ryan yes 
and you have uh, Jack Kirby kind of celebrating uh, some police brutality here, where you have the good cop, bad cop. Uh, this is the guy who's who's unhinged that wants to give him a knuckle sandwich to get get the uh, confession out of him or it's whatever. It's so much fun, the good cop, bad cop. Uh, you know, like seeing that Kirby do that part. You know, like he's close to him and he's yelling and stuff. It really is exactly that that kind of cliche. Very fun. And and the dingbats show up. They have that film canister. What the cops are trying to shake out a jumping jack. You know something? I look at the dingbats, and then you have that character, Good Looks. It 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 it, uh, it adds mystery because it's like, well, what's his deficiency? He's he's got something wrong on the inside. <laughs> you got you got to have that good looking guy, man. That's uh, that's face right from the A team, right? <laughs> and our uh, Batrock the Leaper, man, he he escapes. <laughs> He's a human grasshopper. <laughs> if that's a great power or not. <laughs> the view of him uh, escaping the window is really awesome. That top down view, you it don't, is you don't really see, good. You don't see Kirby doing that that much, man. And it's such a good panel to panel because you get the legs there as he's going off panel into that next panel. Really cool. And also, like the way our uh, our dudes are kind of hanging out the window, like it, it's it's a real good vibe. And that iconic like little revolver that's just like all the important bits. You know, he ain't sitting there with reference all day. Good job on doing like the opposite diagonals for those bottom two panels. You know, on the on the left, the diagonals are going up and to the left, and then the panel on the right, they're going down to the left. It's really good. Creates movement. Royal, we're on almost every page is doing this thing too, where he has like one bold panel because it's almost follows mm -hmm. it follows that rigid six six panel structure. And at, while I was reading this, I was thinking about it as like comic strip. Like it would be, you know, repurpose this and sell it to a syndicate. You know be interesting to see it arranged that way or even repurposed to like two page two panels per page in like that paperback format right yeah all of this is, is very strong look at the police garb man when when they're when it's like time to get tactical i like the police garb and i also like like their positions is like jumping and f almost floating also it's parkour is essentially what we have here is a scene of these guys in pursuit freestyle walking <laughs> Yeah, like, look at these dudes. This is also a chase scene. We always talk about how hard it is to do good chase scenes because it's hard to kind of keep that dynamic that this guy's in front or how far is he in front. And so that's what you have across, you know, five, six panels there. Very effective. Another uh, incredible top-down view. Like, as far as I know, Kirby Kirby isn't placing perspective dots and vanishing points and gritting stuff off, man. So this is just coming out of his fucking head. Yeah. This is strong stuff. So the villains are reunited, but the cops are also right behind them and have them pinned down. It's a strong panel, I think, with the cops in, in position. Yeah. Good spatial relationship. I like that Kirby would do these chapters, too. Me, too. He would do this a lot. Like, Omak, I think, would have chapter breaks like this. It was, yeah. it was kind of a common device that he used in the 70s, and it's nice. It allows for, like, a splash panel, you know, extra splash panels throughout. You know what, man? This this series would have survived if they didn't have the the, the old-timer, like come through in the clutch at the end man you got it's, it's got to be the dingbats all the way it does how about that great man bat steve ditko man bat issue ad it looks so that's a weird. nice piece yeah how, how stoked was dc to get the the marvel guys man the architects of the marvel universe on like in their clutches but they're such a square company that they didn't know what to do with them yeah they do rely too much on the adult to save the day here at they the do they do yeah, and in fact, like, when he introduces himself to the kids, I'm Jack Ryan, or whatever the fuck his name is, and they're like, who cares? We don't need you. And then you got to end it off. Oh, no, this is a real good piece when, they, when they're when reunited with Nonfat. And, <laughs> and he's frozen. And he's frozen. So, like, in every position you see him, like, even when they lay him down, he's still in that same position. <laughs> yeah, when he's laid down in that position is the best. Yeah. <laughs> and then he just springs up and has that mean mug, you know? This is before Fat Albert, so he's like... You it's know, a he's, good character he, design. Yeah. He looks real good. And then you got a, you know, the running joke. If this was a big series, like, it would have been non-fat getting stub toes while kicking dudes. Yeah, he would have been a lot of fun. Yeah, so Jimmy, man, I was just digging through the through the bins, man. What were we gonna do this week, man? And Dingbats, this title, this logo popped out. I'm like, we gotta do. We gotta I do love Dingbats. the logo. I love the cover. I love this book. Like I said, I got this early on in my Kirby, you know, tracking down Kirby issues, and it's been a favorite of mine ever since. And you know, uh, there are two more Dingbat stories. I didn't know that. The Tomorrow's published this year. 
uh, well, 2020 in Dingbat Love. So it's uh, that along with like a divorce romance comic that Kirby had put together. And Tomorrow's published it with, you know, some sort of coordination with DC Comics because obviously they have, you know, they own Dingbats or whatever. Uh, but it's a Tomorrow's publication. So I don't have that. I haven't read those, but two complete stories. I think one inked by Royer and one inked by... Um, D. Bruce Berry or one yes, of those Yes, I guys? believe it's him. I think it's him. That's the era. Thib- Thibodeau, maybe, but I think it's D. Bruce Berry. So kind of interesting, and I just haven't haven't actually held that book. You know, I've seen it online, but haven't been out a lot. So uh, <laughs> it's kind of on my list to get a look at it. And more dingbats, I'm eager to see that. Yeah, me too, man. Let's get out of here. Yep. Okay, favors, like, follow, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Hit the bell. We'll notify you when new vids are available. What you got in the shops? Street Angel, Deadliest Girl Alive, The Plain Janes, and Octobrion in 1976. Patreon.com slash Ed Piscor's Worm Serialized in Red Room. Three books get you the archive. The other 2020 books that I have out there in the wild. Ed Piscor Studio Edition and the X-Men Grand Design Omnibus, which is sold out, but it is in stores. You can subscribe to the Cartoonist Kayfabe e-newsletter to keep up with everything we're doing. You can find those links below this video. You can also find links to Cartoonist Kayfabe t-shirts and merchandise below this video. Give them one more set of marching orders, Jimmy. We'll be on our way. Read more comics.